Hi, I'm Eddie O'Bain. I'm the green cube bot in the middle of the picture, and welcome to Cube. This is a coaching session on Cube, Cubinar, and we've got a group of people who've written down what they want to get, their hopes and fears for the session, and now I'm turning to face them to discuss it. Cube can be downloaded from URL qube.cc. Busy chatting away to them, uh, making sure everybody's on board, everyone's captured what they want. The Hopes and Fears uh, tool, which you just saw, is what we call a performance enhancement tool. We use these a lot for aligning lots of people very quickly. Uh, the series of performance enhancement tools allows us to work very effectively and efficiently on Cube. So we're discussing it, trying to decide what we're going to cover. And there we get a text from Alan Chan. It's a private coaching text. He's asking me something. Alan's the one on the right. He's also speaking. You can see his name flashing above his head. Other people are speaking. You can see Rob flashing up, up and down. So whether the name flashes, that means the person speaking. In the far distance is my colleague, Toby Scott, who is for some reason levitating. And we're talking about maybe what we're going to do first and what we're going to do afterwards. Some conclusions are being drawn. Someone, uh, Paddy's moved up in gray on the right hand side, is moving around. He's obviously impatient to get on with the work. Um, Toby's asking us to turn around. We've all turned around to look at what he's talking about. He's busy explaining what the first thing we're going to have to work on is. Uh, people are moving forward. Everyone's independent on Cube. You get to move as an independent person, just like real life. So all the Cubots can walk around, talk around, sit with each other, just as you would do in real life. It's very, very real. I'm looking at the hopes and fears to make sure what Toby is talking about is going to line up with what we're doing. Everyone seems to have got the picture. Um, there's probably a little bit more explanation from Toby. That's just an image on my screen, which I think I might need. And Alan's gone off to sit down. And everyone's turning around. People are starting to look where they're going. We're breaking into syndicates. Steve is, um, oh, he's off. And they're off to sit with each other. And you can see Ken sitting to the left. They've all zoomed off to go and work on the syndicate work. Like a good tutor, I'm now wandering around to try and find out whether everyone's okay. And I noticed Phil probably needs me to say, you probably need to sit down because you're standing on a table. And he's just done that. I'm chatting with him, maybe finding out where he, he needs to go next, and he's off. So like a good tutor, I'm just making sure everyone settles in. They've got issues which they want to deal with, which are real life issues. And on Cube, you, are, you can talk, you can interact. The group sitting are not disturbed by the other groups. And I'm looking at that large whiteboard. That whiteboard is a magic whiteboard that has a lot of material. And on it, the pictures you just saw are of the people in a previous three face-to-face uh, uh, -face session. You don't need face-to-face -face sessions when you have Cube, but in this particular case, we had run a face-to-face -face session. So as they're working on their syndicate work, I'm doing what all tutors do, which is get ready for the next stage. So I've just pulled up a blackboard in case I should need it. So I've made sure that's okay. I'm looking at the teams and you can see people's names are flashing. That's because they're speaking. So I can tell there's a good quality conversation going on at a distance, even if I can't hear what they're saying. And uh, the yellow triangle I just moused over, yellow triangles are a fast way of getting you around. So I'm just looking around, trying to work out, and I've just clicked on the yellow triangle, having a quick look around the room, looking at the whiteboard, making sure, and I've now gone to check to look at what we call pets champions, performance enhancement tool champions. These are people who are going to coach their colleagues back at work on any of the tools which we've been learning. The flashing lights tell them that I'm about to do something horrible, which is pull them all to me, and it's the end of that particular piece of syndicate work or end of that particular piece of planning. I'm turning around, making sure we've got the right hopes, uh, there's a bit of discussion going on about what they've done. You can see Janet's uh, name flashing. You can see people moving around, moving their heads up and down, side to side. And they're off again. I continue my conversation with Alan. Private chat. We're still talking as well. And uh, now he's gone off to join another group. So again, as a tutor, just checking around, making sure everybody's okay, everything's good. People are working on real things. And I join one of the groups. Um, we're busy having a conversation. On Cube, we tend to use our performance enhancement tools to structure conversations rather than just like old world meetings where people just chat. Other things I'll point out while we're sitting here is directly ahead of us is the, the list of pets champions. We use that a lot. People in the organization, you can go to if you get stuck. But on Cube, what's also interesting is that there's a clock directly above that. The clock shows your local time wherever you are in the world, which means that you're not disconnected from the real world when you're on Cube. This is really important because Cube is very, very absorbing because it's so interactive. And sometimes people lose track of time and they have other commitments. So our conversation's carrying on. You can see that Rob is talking. He's flashing away uh, above his head. And um, I'm responding. Ken is listening in. And um, 
So what has happened is we quite quickly forget that we're looking at cubots. The flashing lights again warns them that I'm about to drag them into something. So uh, off I go and then I pull everyone towards me and now we're all together again and we can start to chat. Um, there's a huge whiteboard. I'm probably pointing out that some people might want to walk, work on one topic, the core topic. And also I'm pointing out that other people might want to work, work on specialist topics. As you can see, there are lots of tabs. And on these tabs, there are lots and lots of these performance enhancement tools. We have 400 of them to deal with everything from what the CEO needs to think about when he's driving a merger, right the way to what a middle uh, executive would need if they need to drive change or put together a business case in 10 minutes. The picture to the left is the picture of the real people virtually. And you can see that um, I'm get, I've got a text message, private text from Denise, who's asking me about um, about moving. She, she, the reason is she's not on the red carpet where everyone else is standing, so she can only hear the people who are in her zone. And so I'm going to suggest, like a good tutor, that she gets closer to one of her colleagues. As you can see in the distance, um, they're working. Toby's working with another group. He's just moved that is one. That's a decision-making uh, tool we use for helping people make high-quality decisions. And you can see the group are clustering around that to work on that. I've come back to one of these glass and, and, and cased areas on this big whiteboard because I've got a little sub team who want to work on something special with me. So I've opened a shareable windows on my desktop and I've pulled my blackboard and I, that gives me a chance to be able to do some teaching. Uh, so I've zoomed in so that everyone can see and I've tested my blackboard and now I start to try and teach. I'm just checking my documents, I start to teach. So I'm explaining, and this particular um, tool is called GlidePath. It explains why people don't usually achieve 100% success in projects and what you need to do if you want to get your projects absolutely perfect. And in other words, zero defects. So I'm explaining what goes wrong, everyone's nodding, they're agreeing with me. Um, and we're saying, well, if that's what happens, how could you get to perfect projects? And I'm illustrating it and trying to talk about real life examples. And here we've got three uh, different types of projects. FOG means the ones which are uncertain. INVIS means that um, you can't see progress. PBN stands for paint by numbers, which is the mechanical projects. VIS means that it's very obvious. Internal and external tell you where the resources are. And I'm saying that by understanding the structure of the, the project uh, challenge, you can start to predict what's going to go wrong. And that's what the gr grid in red is. P and C is about planning coordination. I'm talking about what could go wrong with planning coordination over the life cycle of a project running from left to right in timeline. So we're just discussing it. Hopefully I'm giving them some good examples. And I'm also saying that you can predict what's going to happen and highlighting a really core uh, concept we have, which is called pre-elimination, which is how you get to zero uh, um, de defects in the project. I've just scrolled back so you can see the group who I'm coaching. It's quite a small group. We're having a conversation. You can see that again from the flashing of their names. So they're probably asking me questions of, and trying to look at real life examples and maybe trying to apply it to their own real lives. So that conversation's going on. And remember behind us to our left, if you remember, we turned around to the right. The rest of the group is being coached by my colleague, Toby, and they're working on something completely different. I've just dragged off my desktop again, um, a real life example of the glide path. This is taking the project timeline. You just saw that green flash and I've just gone from top to bottom telling them about things like the, the, the uh, purpose and uh, change type. and. The yellow post-its are what we anticipate will happen and the arrows are the pre-elimination to try and eliminate what's going to go wrong. So that's Cube. You see how dynamic and interactive it is. We can do more than we can do in real life. It allows us to learn and do and be in the workplace and apply the learning directly. You can bring people from anywhere in the world all at once. And if you want to know more, its URL is qube.cc and uh, download it, install it, and uh, I look forward to meeting you soon. Thank you very much.